Mark Hilliard. I'm a master here on the Arcanum, and I would like to welcome you this evening uh, to Pam Cresswell's Level 14 Critique. Oh my. Um, Pam has come such a long way in her short time here on the Arcanum, and this path to the Level 14 images is, is, is no different. Um, I've been uh, amazed with the images that you submitted here, Pam. Um, so if you would, if you would introduce yourself shortly and then uh, tell everybody um, the changes that you think that you've seen in yourself uh, during your path so far here to 14, please. Okay. Um, my name's Pam Cresswell. I've been in Mark Hilliard's mystical light cohort since uh, late spring early summer and I've worked my tail off and he's yelled at me a lot and uh, I think um, my photography has certainly grown he, if I look at things that are just two months old I pull my hair out and redo them so, um, with this level what I tried to do I really pulled from our level seven exercise where we picked famous or wonder not necessarily famous but wonderful photographers as inspiration and I've worked through that and um, Wow you know you're the first person that has said that about level seven that was the best level <laughs> okay well great well let me share my desktop here with you and let's go take a look at your images, okay? All right. I am all ready. And I would like to start with this image, please. And I really, really desire to know what you were thinking when you took this and, and what you were trying to achieve, please. Okay. Um, well, I was going for an old master painterly feel. And a uh, little on the grungy side, not modern grungy, but old grungy. And um, I basically pulled stuff from my everyday life because I'm an avid reader and it's just my stuff. And uh, I was playing on textures and trying to get uh, leading lines and color. And um, that's what I came up with. Uh, I think it's a little too tight. I would have, if I do it over again, I'm going to give it a little more room. Okay. All right. That that that's a good forethought. I like that. What is this right here? That is an amethyst. So it's a crystal mm -hmm. attached to a key that I use as a bookmark. So is there a symbolic um, statement being made here with this key in, the, in this crystal? Maybe, but uh, not overt. Okay. Um, My birthstone. Okay. How on earth do you get that key in between the pages for a bookmark? I just put it in there. <laughs> you don't close the book tight if it's got a key in it. Well, that's true. Okay. Well, so your primary intent was to copy the look and feel for this photograph of some of the old masters of photography that you've seen then? Yes. Okay. Well, right off the bat, let me tell you that you have achieved that. Um, this is a stunning image. Um, I would like to say it's full of symbolism, but if it is, I don't understand it. Which is why I asked you about the key and the crystal. Um, it, I love the treatment. I love the textures. Um, I like the leading lines. I liked how you use these, the, the lines in the wood to draw us in from the bottom of the image right up into the books. Um, the, the feather... Um, is super sharp, uh, full of color and texture. 
we go up into the pear, the same thing could be said that. It even looks like there might be a water spot on the pear here. A little condensation, sure. yep. Okay. Um, in the background, wow, that is a really pleasing background. That reminds me so much um, of some of the older lenses used um, in the 1840s. Okay. Uh, the, the Petzval style lens. I just love the entire fill and the emotional content that you've generated in this image. Okay. Um, exposure wise, I don't think that you could have done any better than you did. Um, the, the color saturations and the sharpness uh, work very well in the foreground subjects. Um, I do think as you stated yourself, let's zoom out, one, that we need just a little bit more room on, on the right hand edge of the, of the book, but you already know that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is I love the sharpness of the foreground mm -hmm. and I understand that you were trying really hard to get that modeled background and the backdrop going here. Yeah. But I really wish the apple were sharp as well. It is so close to the foreground of the image, but yet it is dropped right out. Yeah, I debated. Did but, uh, what, what lens did you use on this? It was my macro, the uh, hundred millimeter. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I am thinking that this this fuzzy apple is actually distracting and the fuzziness nature of it being out of focus actually draws my eyes to it and away from the feather and the pear. I mean obviously we start on the feather and work our way up through the image to the pear uh, but then we exit out to the left right to that apple and then I, I lock there. I stay right on that. Um, <clears throat> and to be perfectly honest with you I don't know if that's just an idiosyncrasy into my own psyche that's doing that, um, I don't know how the others uh, that are viewing this um, would feel about that, and we'll ask them when we're done. Okay. Uh, no, yeah. Um, but I, 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 my personal feeling is that we would probably Im improve a, a great amount by having that apple in in a sharper focus. Or gone. No, no, I think it works very well there. It okay. balances the image and it gives us an anchor point on that upper left hand corner that you would not have. Um, if you were to take the apple and make it go away, then I think I would turn the key around and hang the crystal where the apple's at. Yeah. Because you need something there for balance and to anchor it. But then I think the same thing would apply. Uh, to the crystal, except with it hanging out with the background behind it, you could highlight the crystal with a high intensity light and make it glow from within, mm -hmm. which might be kind of cool, something for you to think about in future iter future iterations of this. Um, but even with the apple being slightly out of focus, um, the image is stunning. I do think that, uh, in, let's talk about this space over here just a little more. You probably need just as much here as, you've, if she has get, as you've given over here on the left side, okay? Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, this image is stunningly perfect in its simplicity. Um, I would love to have this in my portfolio. In fact, I would love to have a print of this on a, a wonderful fiber paper. Um, I like this so much, uh, even with the apple and even with it being crowded on the right. Um, this is one of those images that you need to, uh, to uh, work on and put in that portfolio for the galleries, okay? Okay. Um, now, I did not look at the uh, the raw version of this. Is there room over here in the raw? No. 
Okay, so that just means you're going to have to set up and reshoot it. Yes. Okay. I am going to give you, even though the apple is a distraction, I am going to give you a three on this image. Um, the work and the forethought uh, came together and created a stunning piece of art. And I say, very well done. Thank you. But let's visit this one again in the future, okay? We will. Um, I, I want to see um, what we can do with this image and where we can go with it, okay? Good job, Pam. Thank you. Uh, I do not want to do you. <laughs> uh, let me go turn off my guides. Okay. Tell me about this one. Okay, I was playing with candlelight, and um, I set up two candles, 45 degree angles from the uh, picture. You can probably tell by the lights on it. And uh, it's in a darkened room, and I pushed the picture to uh, the back of the table so that it was fairly close to the wall and the shadows from the heather plant were dancing around in the firelight. And so that's the intent was to grab those shadows. All right, so let's look at that. F13 for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so that is remarkably sharp in the shadow areas on the wall for that long of an exposure. Uh, that you, you've very you controlled the environment very well on this. Um, I love everything about this. I love that you have placed the the picture a little bit to the right and centered the plant dead center. Um, and while I would like to think uh, the plant and the flowers are the main subject, in my eyes, they aren't. The main subject are the shadows. Yes. And was that your intention to start with? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, well done. Wow. Ten extra points just for a super conception, okay? Now, having said that, I do have a suggestion for you to consider when you do this type of experiment in the future. Yes. Um, I love the candles where you've got them placed, and where we are casting a, a shadow up about 45 degrees on the paper or on the, the wall. Mm -hmm. I would like to see you take two more candles and place them high up here so that we cast in more towards the center so that we cast some shadows of the plants down here as well. I'm going to have to get a, one of those floor stand candelabras. Yes, you are. Like they use in church. Um, but I wouldn't do too much. I would have them more centered mm -hmm. so that they cast a shadow like basically right here, Yeah. right here, and see what happens. Um, I think that you will find that that will improve it but there is a chance it might make it too busy as well. Um, as it stands, as completed, this is perfect. I cannot imagine the thought that went into this to create these wonderful shadows up here. Um, I sit and I look at this image in awe of your capability. This is what I was talking about in your amazing improvement that you've, that you've undergone here. This right here is worthy of a master's project, just what you're doing right here. Um, I don't know how you got this, this texture on the wall. Was it there? Well, yeah, it's a little bit enhanced, but it's, it's an older house and the uh, walls are plaster and not painted, uh, um, wallboard. It's it's you know the old plaster on wooden yeah. lathes, 
So there's a little texture to it, and then I did do a little bit of texture work uh, with uh, analog color effects. All right, wait. Just the touch. It works very, very well. Uh, congratulations. Uh, this is a solid four image. Unfortunately, I can only give you three because that's all we can do, but this is stunning. Now, having said that, I would also love to see this on a, a rag paper as well. Okay. And uh, I might actually put this in my gallery for you. I would love that. Uh, I think that this is beyond stunning. And this is worthy of hanging on any gallery wall. And I'm talking fine art gallery now. Uh, not the, the normal galleries that sell everybody else's work. I'm talking about the, the, the high dollar stuff. Um, this, this, this is a magnificent image. Okay, and you should be very proud of this. I am. You know, we talked a couple of nights before I took this, and I said it just wasn't coming together, and I wasn't ready for the critique, and then, you know, things came together. Yeah, no, this, this, this image, the, this is your star image of the critique. This is it right here. Okay. Uh, the books come in uh, second, maybe third. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, 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 we'll move right. on from that. Oh, okay. We'll talk about this one. Okay. Go ahead and give me some background. All right. Uh, well, you know, I've done a lot of lily shots, but uh, I can't resist them because they're just so graceful and elegant. This one, I laid it on uh, a dark ceramic tile and put a black, um, one of those reflector sheets or circle, but I turned it so the black side was facing the camera. But okay. there's sunlight, but it's in a windowsill, and there's sunlight coming in. On that yeah, it looks it looks like it's natural lighting coming in from the left. It is. Okay. So it was very carefully placed so that the flower was catching the natural light but still had black behind it. Okay. All right. I love the diagonal here that you've created with the shadows. Now, how many people would think of doing that with shadows rather than their subject? Okay. Um, I like that the fact that you've positioned the lily over here on the left at an angle looking into and facing the light. It's like... It is feeding on the light here, and it, 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 it's graceful, and it's purposeful, and I love that about this. Um, I love the texture, the out-of-focus texture in the foreground. This works very well uh, in your composition. The lighting on the petals is perfect. It's soft. It's light. Um, it's not too harsh. I like that we've got these, these shadow areas. Now, normally... I would say bring out a little bit of detail here, but not in this case. In this case, we need the secretive area of the flower so that we can wonder and look at it and and think about what's actually there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I love the color saturation. I think you did an exceptionally good job on the, the composition and the setup of this. Um, but I know how the lilies look. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me what color um, the pollen is here on these stamens. It's kind of purple. Okay. On my monitor, um, they look brownish black with, with no detail whatsoever. Okay. Now, given your experimentation and your growing skills in lighting, might I suggest that you position one of your lights in the lower right-hand corner okay. at an angle facing up at that pollen and stamen and just putting a, a touch of light 
on the ends of those so that we can bring out some color in that. And this would all be done in lighting. Mm -hmm. um, you could even choose to do it with a small flashlight if you wanted, but it, it would have to be aimed very carefully so that it did not touch the petals behind them. Mm -hmm. Now down here, there's no way that that can happen, but these we can. Okay? Yeah. And I would just love to see a little bit more brightness on this so that I can see the color of this better uh, rather than, than this darkness. I mean, this, it, it, this makes it look as though it were dead. Oh. Okay? Regardless. Yeah, kind of a dark uh, purple, but with a, going a little bit to brown. So, yeah, I could bring that out. I mean, I don't know if it's possible to do it and not increase the lighting on these two petals over here. Well, what I might have to do is do two exposures and then put them together. Do you know what a snoot is? Uh, no. It's something that semi-covers the lens? It's something that semi-colors one of your external flashes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it right. Okay. Take a piece of black construction paper and roll it up into a funnel with a very small opening on the far end and put it over the flash. And then you aim the snoot to position the light just on these four or five right here. And you set it to a very low power, um, you know, like minus five uh, EV. On, on, on the ends of the stamen here mm -hmm. so that we get just a micro amount of light on this. You would be surprised how little you would actually need to bring this out. Um, and given your increasing skills um, in still life lighting with flashes and reflectors and bouncers and, um, this is something I'd like to see you try. Okay. Uh, just make yourself a snoot. It's, it's going to have to be done with a snoot. And make the opening of the end of that snoot no more than a half inch in diameter. Okay. And the other end of the funnel, then you tape over the, the flash head. Okay? Okay. Um. This still, even with the dark pollen, is a spectacular image. And I would be willing to bet that Rhonda just gushed all over this image. Yeah. Okay? Um, and it's, it's worthy of that. But like I said, I would just love to see a little bit more detail here. And you might even be able to do this and bring this out just with five visa. Yeah. I just put a selection point on this. Um, in fact, I didn't think of that earlier. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what it does. Now let's start with the light area down the center. Let's brighten that up. Don't worry about the fact that I brighten the flower up. I'll, I'll send the flower back to where it belongs. I'm going to bump the saturation up. I'm going to bump the structure up, especially the structure. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's look at the... Now, I don't care that I'm affecting the, the petals. I'll fix that in a moment. Yeah. Let's see if we can bring up just a little there. In fact, I'll even shrink that down. Let's go down with it. Now 
Now watch, now we talked about this last night in our post-processing tutorial, but we didn't actually cover it. See how I'm drawing a square around those selection points? Yeah. That's how gonna, you group them? I'm going to group them now. Okay. And now I have one point that I can alter the settings for each. Okay. And you said they were a little on the purple side? Mm hmm Okay, now let's go in and drop an anchor point and take our flower back to where it should be. Okay. Let's put one here on the gray. And one over here on the black and one over here. Okay, so now I'm going to select the grouped image again. Okay. Shadows. And blue to shift those a little bit over to the. All right, let's see what that looks like. You see how I use the anchor points to protect the rest of it. Now I overcooked this because <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't take the time to blow it up. But having said that, do you see how we have a little bit more color? Mm -hmm. You could do this. You could do this in Vivisa. Just be careful you don't overcook it like I did here. And in, in order to not do that, if I in Vivisa, if I had zoomed in, mm -hmm. okay, let's go. F Mark. Yeah, see how we started to draw that to draw that purple back out. Um, here is where I overcooked it. Uh -huh. I made my selection point too small, and the, the the usable area of the circle was like this. So the trick to fixing that is to increasing the size of the control point, not make it quite so small. Okay. okay. You, you follow what I'm saying? I do. I do. Okay, good. So we'll turn that off. Go up here, turn it on again. Yeah, that, that's, that's too much and too small. But the concept is good, and we could go in and do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I, I made sure that I used the anchor points to keep this kind of moody dark. Okay, so it fits within that room lighting. Um, you're going to get a three on this one, too. Oh, I thought that was going to be a two with all the no, editing. No, ma'am. Okay. You did a good job on this. And the editing was just to see if it could be done in Vivisa, and it can be. Um, we just have to take more time with it and keep the control point sizes up and then rely specifically on the anchor points to keep everything else under control, which I proved that we could do. Okay? Okay. Okay, let's talk about this. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. These must have... Guides. It was doing the same thing to Rhonda, and that I don't know why. That means that they came from your computer that way. Yeah, I I never seen guides get saved in a file before. Oh, oh no, they'll get saved. Oh okay. Okay. All, All right. right. What do you want? 
<laughs> this was my break the rules picture. Okay. Okay. I shot it at um, a very high ISO, uh, 6400. Okay. Um, I shot it at f22 so that the focus is kind of flat. Okay. And uh, then I played up the graininess and added texture, added a wet plate texture. Yes. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the texture? Oh, I, it was in analog effects and it was in the wet plate section and I just played until I got what I wanted. All right. I saved it, I think. but I'm going to have to go there. Okay. okay. Um, I, I love the old timiness of this. And it does have a wet plate look and feel to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like how you composed it. I, I love the grain. The grain works. Uh, the tears and the markings, I would not change any of that. If anything, I might distress it even more, especially around the edges where we normally see this kind of damage in wet plate work. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I think your choice in processing was 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 well spent, uh, time wise. Um, this bothers me a little bit. This one dead twig, uh -huh. but I like the fact that there's this dead twig hanging out of the plant. It's all dried up and curled in. Yep, it was a flower stalk that had dried up. I left it in there because I like the uh, working with the threes, and it kind of uh, pulls into the curve and sends you back to the stalks that are alive and beautiful. Okay, and that was my same feeling for the image, um, but something about this still bothers me. Okay, and I don't want to remove it because I like the contrast between life and death and what I'm thinking and I promise you won't hit me <laughs> okay I promise is to pull off a flower blossom no my and, baby <laughs> and drop it on the table right under the end of this right here yeah okay I guess we have to sacrifice for our art I mean, think about that. Um, I think that that would work very well here. And it enables you to keep the dead stock, and then you have a, a fallen flower uh, to, to, to give uh, more impact uh, to that. Otherwise, as is, um, this is a pretty good image. Um, I, I do think that since you were trying to emulate that wet collodion, that wet plate look, that you needed to leave a little bit more room here. Okay. I would not change the composition. I like this here. Instead, what I would do is pull back a little. Keep this in the same basic space, but increase the frame size by pulling back. Zooming out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is a very interesting image. Uh, it's very artsy. And I can see uh, where something like this might be um, very, very popular uh, because it grabs a person's attention and holds on to it. Another thing that you might consider doing um, down the line, not for the purposes of the critique, but for the purposes of, of um, presenting this uh, on a wall somewhere, is to take um, a small brush, maybe a half inch wide, flat, soft, and to use an acrylic, a clear acrylic gel and highlight these imperfections that you've put in here through the wet cl uh, caladium. Uh, so they have texture. some this got, or you know, some actual physical texture. Yeah, give this some physical texture, as well as this these 
marks here uh -huh. and this line here. Okay. Uh, yes. You know, it's years ago in the 70s, um, they were, companies were selling what were known as pre-distressed furniture, furniture that had marks and nicks and dents in it right out of the factory. Mm -hmm. And that appealed to people, and they, they, they bought it up like crazy. <laughs> okay, and I am thinking in terms of this, just a little, a touch. See where all of these bubbles are here and yeah. this line coming down here and, and then these, these blotches? I love those blotches. Just emphasizing those by painting on a very light layer of um, a, a gloss gel medium with a small, soft, flat brush. Then once it's dry, then you would need to spray the entire image with a, with a clear gloss fixity to blend in the painting a little more so that it looked uh, more part of the, the distressing parts of the issue, of the, of the, the print, okay? Okay. I like it, Pam. Um, dang it. I'm going to give you a three on that, too. Sorry. <laughs> well, this is just so so dismal. I can't help you improve. That means that you, I can't help you anymore. Oh, yes, you can. I'm learning all the time. All right. Let's talk about this apple. Well, actually, it's a nectarine. Oh, all right. I know, it, it does kind of look like an apple. This was uh, taken in candlelight. That's what gives it that uh, glow. Mm -hmm. And I was trying for an old master painting, still lifey sort of feel. This was the precursor to doing the, the still life with the books. This was kind of like my test piece. Okay. Yeah, you know, this looks so much like a... a a piece of fruit still life done in oils. I know. That's what I was doing. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Um, the composition is nice. The detail and the texture are amazing here, as well as the texture down here. Um, I do think that we could improve this ever so slightly, not too terribly much, um, by considering another quick treatment. Okay. Lighten up that stem area. No, I wouldn't change a thing on that piece of fruit. Okay. I would, down here, in this texture here, I would bump the texture up just a little bit more with uh, structure, and then I would brighten it just slightly, not much. Okay. All right. And then I would do the same thing again. Um, down in this corner. Uh, maybe not all the way into the corner. There. Oh, I like that because it's... See the line, the light line? Uh-huh. Oh, I like that. And bumping up the texture just a little bit. In fact, let's try going the opposite way over here and blurring that out more so we don't see the texture, but yet brightening it just, just a touch. Yeah, no more than that. And that's it. Right, let's let it work. Now let's look at before and after. I like that. You see how that isolates the piece of fruit even more? Mm-hmm. But yet we still have this this dark, warm, moody piece of fruit, um, more reminiscent of, of the, the masters because we have this textured foreground. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we can actually see a little bit, a tiny bit of detail in that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, maybe making it a bit warmer, the control points that I put in there. Um, adding a, a little bit of warmth to that control point uh, so that it, it, it 
highlights the candlelight a little more. And it's not so white, white. Um, what do you think of that? I like that. That does help. Okay. Now, if I had like a silk brocade that was black on black to put the piece of fruit on, that might be even more dramatic. Yeah, that might be different too. I can visualize that. See, you're you're spreading your sickness. <laughs> okay, the right. last one. I saved this one for last. Okay. Well, uh, this is kind of like this one was shot back in July, and back in July, I thought this was the best I could do. And now I see so many things that are wrong with it. All right. Boy, what a what an opening statement. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell me what you see right and what you see wrong? Okay, well the color is right. The focus on the flower is mostly right. Um, it's the background that's screwed up. You don't like this white spot? <laughs> I hate that white spot and I hate the uh, texture of the uh, fabric that's underneath the foremost petal. Okay, now that I'll agree with, but we can fix that. We can paint that out in Vivisa. But I do like this halo of this white spot behind the fruit. And I was thinking that you did that intentionally with a light. Well, it was done with a light to bring out the flower. It just, I didn't really want it to be on the background. Wow. See, I think that adds <laughs> this flower uh, marvelously. Okay. Um, let's look at that. Let's, let's just select some of that white. And take all the structure out of it and make it really soft, okay? Okay. All right. Now let's just move this around a bit so that we can increase the halo a bit. Now we're not going to leave that go out over the entire image, okay? I'm going to put another control point here and I'm going to make it very, very soft by decreasing the structure and I'm going to increase the size of it so that it, it it affects the white halo more gradually. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to copy this around. I really do like that 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 white haloing effect that you got. Okay. Yeah, I think that's marvelous. Um, let's play with this just a little more. You see what I'm doing? I'm adding just a touch of contrast mm -hmm. uh, to the petals because the process of increasing the, the halo took some contrast away from the image. especially back here. Yeah, let's look at that. Oh, let's go down here. What is that? That is light shining through the background, isn't it? It, yeah, I you didn't have enough black. Structure? That is one of those uh, zippered cases that goes over uh, to carry... Uh, the camera equipment and I just kind of balled it up and stuffed it in there because I didn't have enough black to to fill where I wanted it Oh, uh, okay and I guess it was actually closer to the camera than the rest of it so the detail got picked up I don't know it's a tough choice I, li I like what you've got with that light um, if anything I like the mottled effect that it gives to the backdrop. 
And maybe if we expanded that further into the backdrop, but de-emphasized it even more, that might be kind of cool. Tough choice. It's an artistic choice. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the image. Okay? It has nothing to do with your work. Um, I, I, I love the fact that I can see individual grains of pollen. Um, I do think that this stem coming down, I would gradually fade this a little bit more to black. You know, you can do that with in, in Color Effects Pro. Oh, I can do that by hand. I can paint. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you, if you use a gra the graduated ND filter. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And then, of course, just paint this out. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I kind of have mixed feelings about the, the white now. Isn't it funny how when we play with it, our minds can change? <laughs> I, I don't think that having a perfectly back black black drop here is in the image's best interest. Yes. Now, I kind of like the, the glow that's above the flower and to the right. That mm -hmm. kind of looks like a reflection of the flower. Mm -hmm. That didn't bother me. It's what's below the flower that kind of irked me. Well, you could do what I did. Yeah. Uh, down there below, and just go in the negative direction as well. Or I can get another bunch of flowers and start over again. Yes, you can do that, and there's nothing wrong with getting it perfect in camera. But you need to learn these post-processing skills, too, and learn how to do this after the fact as well. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to give this image a two and a half. Um, but I still think that this is, this is one of your top images. Um, the detail in here is, is marvelous. I love the fact that we can see the individual grains of pollen here. Looks like there might be a little on the leaf, but that could also be um, a reflection. I think it's a little of both, actually. The you pollen might, was everywhere. Yeah, you might try putting a, um, a polarizer on here, too. Okay. Because it'll, it'll saturate these colors even more. Okay? Okay. Wow. Well done. Uh, that was a most impressive set of images, Pam. Thank you. Thank you. I worked my tail off. Did you? I did. Boy, I hate, I, 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 I'd, I'd hate to think that. Here, I, you know, I think all of this just comes so naturally to you. Well, when it when it happens, it happens pretty easily. But I sweat in between times. Mm hmm. All right, well, congratulations. I will level you up as soon as we're done here. You did a marvelous job. And um, I'm pleased to see the, the road that you're walking, especially with the, this new lighting setup that you're experimenting with. Uh, this is something new and a, and a whole area that you can expand into. Um, next thing you know, you'll be digging out old kids toys, you know, army men and setting up battles and <laughs> photographing them. No, I don't know about that. But I do like this. Um, but I thank you for the time and the effort you put into it and I, I thank the other members of the cohort that came um, and uh, supported you during this and hopefully they can walk away with um, uh, a bit of knowledge uh, from your struggles as well. But I'm going to stop the broadcast.